Now that we've had the chance to look at Activity 2.2 Programming with Procedure Introduction, today we're going to move forward with cleaning up the user interface. What you'll notice in MIT App Inventor is that the user interface that was given to us is very basic and plain. We want to kind of jazz this up a little bit to meet our users and make it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. So we're going to go through just a couple things and just learn how to change the color and space some things out to make this more appealing. Now your user may want something a little bit different. You may want to change the colors different than what I'm doing and that is all fine. The main goal for this is to make this more appealing for a user that would be using this application. So let's take a look at MIT App Inventor and we're going to start off by going to our screen and in our screen we're going to make sure that we turn off that title that says title visible. That's going to give us just a little bit more room to work with. Now you will notice that we're going to be working with some arrangements as well as buttons and labels as we move through this. We will be needing to adjust the properties of both the arrangements and the actual components within those arrangements. So let's start off by looking at our first vertical arrangement and what properties we have here. Here you'll notice that we have a, a line horizontal which is centered as well as my vertical. The only thing we really want to make sure we change with this is our actual height percentage. We're going to go ahead and shrink that down a little bit by making that 20%. And then I'm going to go ahead and change the background color to match my application, which is a dark gray. Once we go ahead and change that, let's take a look at the button, the word phrase button that is, that is inside of that arrangement. Your word phrase buttons properties, we're going to go ahead and make this a little bit wider and a little bit more easily to read or to click on for the user. So in order to do that, we're going to go ahead and make the font bold. Let's change that font size to 18 and let's go ahead and change the width from a 35% to a 50%. That's going to make that stand out for us and make that user easily easy to click on when they need to do so. From there, you can change your text color if you would like, but I'm going to go ahead and leave that the color that it is. Now that we're done with that vertical arrangement one, let's go take a look at the next horizontal arrangement, which is horizontal arrangement three. For here, we're going to look at our score label, which is placed inside of that arrangement. So for that horizontal arrangement, we want to make sure that our height is going to be set to 10%. We're going to be changing our label to match that as we move forward and go through this actual activity. My background color, I'm going to set that to a dark gray as well. It makes it easy for me to read the actual text that's in there. Once you have that horizontal arrangements property set, let's take a closer look at that score label. From here, our properties, we're going to go ahead and look at that font size. It's already bolded but we're going to go ahead and change the font size and make that a little bit larger. So we'll set that to 18. We'll go ahead and change the height percentage and make sure that that matches the arrangement of 10%. And then for me, I'm going to go ahead and change the color. I'm going to make this try to stand out a little bit more. So I'm going to change that to an orange color. You can change that to whatever color you would like to, but for me that stands out really nice against that gray background. Now that we have that score label set, Let's go ahead and take a look at my vertical arrangement two, which contains the word phrase label. For my vertical arrangement two, I'm going to go ahead and change that background color to match as a dark gray. My height, I'm going to leave it automatic. And my width, I'm going to leave that at a fill parent. Nothing else I really need to do with that arrangement. So now we can look at the actual label that is inside of that. We want to make sure that for our word phrase label, we have it bolded. We have our font size, which is set to 20. My height, I'm going to go ahead and change that height here, and I'm going to set my height to a fill parent. That's going to go ahead and take the height of the actual arrangement that we have set. My width should also be fill parent. And again, if you want to change the color of your actual text, you can go ahead and do that by clicking down where it says text color. Now the next arrangement that we're going to look at contains this item label. And you're going to notice that with this item label, it's not really placed within an arrangement, which doesn't allow us to really control a lot. 
So I'm going to go ahead and bring in a new arrangement and I'm going to place it right above that item label. Now you'll notice that that item label is still there, it's just not in the arrangement. So let's take a look at that arrangement and I'm going to go ahead and make sure that my height for this is going to be set to 30%. My width is going to be set to fill parent. Now for my align horizontal and vertical, I want to make sure that I center my text or whatever goes into that actual arrangement. Now that I have my arrangement set, I can go ahead and change that. And I'm going to change that again to a dark gray. And then I'm going to go ahead and find that item label and then make sure it's highlighted. And I'm going to drag that to be inside of that actual horizontal arrangement that we just created. Now that I've done that, You'll notice that my item label is blank, but we still do need to look at some of those properties as we go forward here. My background color for this, I'm gonna make sure I set to a dark gray so that it matches my arrangement. My font is bold. I'm gonna increase the font size just a bit to make it 30. And then from there, let's take a look at the height, which will change to be a fill parent now, and we'll leave the width as a fill parent as well. I'm going to make sure that my text color is a color I want. Right now it's set to pink, and I think that kind of stands out really well on that gray background. Now one thing I will notice as I look at this, I do have a lot of gray going on. So at this time, maybe I want to go back up to where I have this click here for word phrase. And let's change that uh, vertical arrangement. Instead of a dark gray, I'm going to make that black. So that's going to give us a chance to kind of have a little contrast throughout our app. You can change this to whatever color you would like. We want to try and keep some of the colors somewhat similar as we move forward. Now that we have our next portion here, what we're going to look at is this next arrangement contains three different components. A start timer button, a reset timer button, then the time left label. I'm actually going to split this up because there's a lot going on within that arrangement. So I'm going to take another horizontal arrangement and I'm going to place it in between the item label and my start time button. From here, we're going to go ahead and adjust the width to make sure that the width of that arrangement is set to fill parent. We can leave the height as automatic. We do want to make sure that we change our align horizontal so that that is centered. And then as far as my background color, I'm going to go ahead and set that to a dark gray as well. Now that I have that arrangement, I can go ahead and find this time left label. And it's kind of located in the upper right hand corner of that arrangement. I'm going to simply take him and I'm going to drop him into this new arrangement that we created. This is going to put that time label on its own separate line and make it easier for us to see. Now going forward with the properties of your time left label, we want to make sure that our font size is a little bit larger. That's kind of small for me. So I'm going to change that to be about 24. We can leave the height and the width as automatic. And again, if you want to change the color of this text, go ahead and do that by clicking down at the bottom of your screen. Now that we've separated them, we want to go and take a look at this next horizontal arrangement. And that contains basically our start timer and reset button. So if I look at that horizontal arrangement, let's go ahead and make sure the height of this is going to be set to about 13%. Now by doing that, that's going to kind of control how large we can create and change these buttons to be. The other thing I want to do at this time is I'm going to change my align horizontal and vertical to both be centered. And I'm going to change the background color. Let's make this black. So you can see we have that gray screen now kind of right in the middle. Now that we have that, let's go and change these buttons a little bit so that they can stand out just a bit. Now, because of this and we getting rid of that time left label, I am going to modify this code just a little bit so that the start timer is all on one line. And I'm going to do that by starting off when looking at the properties and making sure that the background color is somewhat different make it stand out a little bit. Let's go ahead and make that bold. I'm going to bump the font size up to about 16. We'll leave the height at automatic, but we're going to change the width of this to be 47%. Once we go down here, we're going to actually delete where we have that backslash N. 
and get rid of that. And then I'm going to leave the color as the default for right now. Now you'll see that my button will just say start timer. With my reset button, we're pretty much going to do the same thing. We're going to go ahead and change the color. I'm going to make that red. I'm going to change the font to bold. Let's go ahead and increase the font size just a bit to 16. The width, match your start button at 47%. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and get rid of that backslash N. You don't want to get rid of the timer, just the backslash and the N. And now we should have stop slash reset timer here. Now, if you look at the screen, you're going to notice that we have our start and reset button are right next to one another. They're kind of touching. So we can bring a horizontal arrangement in and simply drop it right in between those two. We're going to go ahead and change the height of this to fill parent. And then we're going to go ahead and change the width of this to fill parent as well. Now, by doing that, you're going to notice that you'll get a little bit of a space. Now, if you don't like how it looks on your screen, just keep in mind that we only have a few percentiles left to work with for the width. So if you want to change the percentage, you can go ahead and change that. And I wouldn't go really any more than maybe 3% to kind of straighten that out a little bit. And if you want, you can go ahead and change that background color to match so that that matches the black as well. Now, the last thing we need to really look at is this last arrangement, which is your horizontal that contains the skip button and the reset. So for your horizontal for this one, we're going to go ahead and make sure that we set that background color and we're going to make sure that that is black. We have it centered and centered. Let's change the height percentage just a little bit to 17. The width we can leave it fill parent. And now my final arrangement is ready for us to look at those components. So for these, we're going to go ahead and take a look at that skip button and what we can do to change this and make it a little bit more appealing. Let's go ahead and make sure that we make that font bold. I'm going to leave the font size at 14, but I am going to change my height percentage to 10%. From there, I can leave the width set to automatic. Um, I'm going to leave everything else pretty much the way that it is. And again, if you want to change the color, feel free to do so. And then let's go to our reset button and match what we did for the skip button component. And that's going to be simply making sure that we have a bolded font, font size of 14. Let's go ahead and make sure our height is set to 10%. And from there, we are ready to go. Now, if we take a look at our screen again, we're going to notice that our buttons are touching one another. So we're going to want to go ahead and put some type of arrangement in there to kind of separate them out. So I'm going to drop another horizontal arrangement in between them. And for this last arrangement, let's make that height fill parent. And then the other thing we have to look at is the width. And I'm going to go ahead and make my final width for this about 10%. And let's just go ahead and change the background to make sure that it is black and matches the screen. Now, what you'll want to make sure you do is you go ahead and take a look at your tablet and make sure everything is spaced out nice and neat. And if you need to make any final adjustments before going ahead onto the coding section, please make sure you do so at this time.